Excellent. So a warm welcome back, everyone, to Leap High Africa, where we empower the African diaspora and those on the continent to start businesses in Africa and investing on the continent. And now I have with me Chris Folayan of More for Africa. Chris, so nice to have you here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and um, so we will dive in in empowering and motivating Africans to start businesses on the continent and invest there. So before I actually, you know, ask you what More for Africa is about, I just want to ask you, you know, when you look at your life that you had before you started your business and you're based in the USA and you're originally from Nigeria. So if you remember the life that you had before you started your business, and then you remember, you look at your life now. Tell us, how has it changed? Well, that's a very good question. It's changed, um, it's changed significantly, I think. Um, so prior to starting More for Africa, I'm, I'm what many people would call a serial entrepreneur. So I've started several companies. Um, prior to starting More for Africa, I owned um, a pretty good sized software company, um, developing software for pretty much all the fortune 500s you can think of in the in the silicon valley so um, a lot of silicon valley high-tech companies were were my clients um, but then you know mall for africa came along and that idea came along and uh it's been a it's been a huge change because you know now instead of doing something for high-tech companies i'm actually i feel I'm, i now have a purpose and I'm impacting Africa and doing things to improve lives in Africa, not just making software for you know for, for big companies, but um, uh, it, there's now a better story to tell. There's an impact being made, you know, on on the continent and for the people of the continent, which is extremely important to me. So um, I, I feel more enlightened, more motivated. And um, I feel like I can make a, a significant difference um, with, with more for Africa that um, obviously I, I couldn't make in the other company. Yeah, amazing, um, Chris. And I really feel you. I think it's about um, not just doing business, but about finding your purpose and doing something really yeah. meaningful. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Amazing. Great. So tell us. More for Africa in a couple of sentences. What, what, do we, what kind of business are we looking at with Mall for Africa? Yeah, so Mall for Africa, the elevator pitch for Mall for Africa is we are an online platform that helps US and UK businesses do business in Africa. Um, many US and UK retailers um, you know, have this hesitation about working in Africa and doing business in Africa. Uh, there are all these risk factors that they think about, such as fraud, how do I get products to the market, customs duties, last mile delivery. Uh, all of these you know, hesitations go through people's minds in the retail business. So they end up not doing business with Africa, not doing business on the continent, which is, to be honest, a shame. Um, but you know, we, we've stepped in and we've said, look, we can, we've built this platform. We will take on all the risk you don't have to take on any of the risk whatsoever, um, Mr. Retailer, and uh, we'll get your products to, to the individual who orders it. So we've built this amazing platform that helps the US and UK retailers sell into Africa. And we've now provided Africans for the first time with the ability to purchase items from all of these amazing US and UK retailers in order to, you know, dress fashionably and look good, which Africans love to do. Um, and we also have helped businesses start and grow. And we've helped schools supply them with books. We've helped hospitals supply them with things such as tethoscopes. Um, and we've, you know, we've, we've done a lot. So we've been very impactful in people's personal lives, um, allowing them to shop like never before. And we've been impactful in helping people start businesses because our platform gives them access to products that you know they they could they only dreamt of but never felt they could actually buy or acquire because you know their friends traveling abroad didn't want to bring over such a large item or anything like that. So um, we feel 
we feel very proud of the fact that we've enabled um, commerce and, and e-commerce and broken down that barrier and that wall that existed between doing business with the US and UK retailers and, and Africa. So um, very, very proud of that. Amazing. So Chris, tell us what retailers are you working with? So if someone in Africa wants to purchase a product now, what does he have access to? Well, well, he or she have, they have access to over 250 retailers, um, over 8 billion items, which is way more than just Amazon has. So, you know, um, there have been many write-ups that have um, called us the largest e-commerce platform on the planet. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, very we, exciting. We, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're very proud. We're very proud of that. Yes. Uh, very proud to be African and doing you know, putting our name um, on the map of, you know, technology and, and literally bringing Africans the ability to buy and purchase items like that. Um, so we, we work with over 250 retailers, have over 8 billion items on our platform. Drop, drop in a few names, Chris, please, for <laughs> us. Big, big yeah. names, USA and UK and so on. Yeah, so we, we, we work with um, businesses like, in the UK, businesses like Next, um, Halls and Curtis. And in the US, we do business with Macy's, Carter's, eBay, um, Best Buy, and the, the list goes, Neiman Marcus, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, you know, Newegg, Electronics. Um, and we just, yeah, they're over 250, um, but think about the 250 top retailers um, those are the retailers that are, are on our platform and we're adding um, we hope to be at the 400 mark um, pretty soon we we now have retailers calling us and contacting us saying please can you put me on your platform so we're we're now you know in that position where retailers are calling us trying to get our business and it's it's very it's very humbling to be honest because now you know, they see Africa differently. You know, in the yeah. beginning, it was very, very hard and very tough. And with anybody starting any business, you know, it, it is tough. Um, and it was very tough to get that retailer to say, yes, I want to do business with you. I want to, I want to see what Africa has to bring because Africa was not on their roadmap. Um, we had to put Africa on their roadmap. We had to sell them the continent. Um, it, not the best position to be in where you're begging people to look at the continent you're from in a different light because they had this mental um, picture of Africa being that, you know, continent where everybody was poor, people were living in huts, you know, flies on their lips. And they didn't think, you know, Africans wanted the, to wear, you know, the Ralph Lawrence or the Dolce and Gabbana's or even just nice high quality clothes um, and gain access to to product. And as African, as an African, I could tell you that, you know, even being born and raised in Nigeria, um, we all wanted to look good. We all, we all wanted to be fashionable. But the retailers here did not have that view um, about the continent. So it's a mind shift we've uh, we've taken under our wings to push out there and make sure all retailers know that you know Africa is open for business and it's it's been a it's been a journey and not easy but an incredible you know, journey so far yeah finally making the mark incredible journey and and i i love your success story and here is um you know some assumptions that i really want to um tackle some assumptions that are very persistent among the african diaspora now here is um what i want to everyone to know so chris and his team have built a multi multi million dollar international company right chris um and um now the the assumption that people in the African diaspora often have is that number one, in order to start an African business, you need to relocate. You need to pack everything, you know, sell your house, relocate to Africa and be on the ground 100%. The other assumption that many have is, well, you need at least 50,000 or 100,000 to get anything off the ground. So Chris, Tell us, you've built a multi-million uh, dollar company. Let us know actually how many years has it been since you started? 
It's been about five years. Five years. So a pretty, my God, this is like just at the edge of, um, you know, coming out of start, startup phase. And um, Chris, let us know, where have you started? Have well, you started with 100,000 and then being 100% no. based in Abuja or Lagos? No, no, no. Um, this all started in, in, in my bedroom. Um, it's, it started in a, in a spare bedroom in my house. Um, it started with almost no money. I would say the initial development cost. Um, so I'm, my background is programming and marketing and, and, and development. So, um, you know, I wrote the first scripts um, for the platform, built a platform just pretty much solo in, in the bedroom. And, you know, started very humbly with family and friends the amount of money spent in the beginning was maybe a few thousand dollars just to get get the word out and get you know people to buy um, products on the platform and you know get noticed but it was simply simply looking at the idea you know i, I think everybody needs to come up with a concept uh, that we know the african continent or their target market actually wants and what I did was, you know, because th the story is, I keep going back and forth to Nigeria where I'm from. People kept asking me to buy products all the time. And I always kept taking products to Nigeria. Anybody that's from Nigeria knows if you come to America, people will ask you, hey, can you bring this back for me? Can you bring that back for me? So I saw a need because every time I kept going back home, People kept asking me, can you bring this stuff? Can you bring that stuff? Um, and then I went to try to check into my Delta flight from San Francisco to Lagos. I had 10 suitcases. They told me I couldn't board. So I knew, you know, every time I kept going back home, I keep, people keep asking me for stuff. I keep taking more and more stuff. So there's a need in the market where people can access the product. People can see what they want on Macy's, on Ralph Lauren or on Carter's. They can see what they want, but these stores aren't tailored, tailored to them. They're not shipping to them. They're not part of their target audience. So looking at that and saying to myself, okay, so there's a need, there's a cavity that needs to be filled in this market. What can I do? And developing this thinking from the lowest standpoint, well, how can I get this started without that much money? How can I get this started from America? Because you know, I have a family here, I'm unable to move back home. What can I do? And it was pretty simple. It's, you know, I, I knew that there was a need. Um, it was now talking to friends and family and people that I trust in Nigeria, which is where we started, and asking them, hey, what do you think about this? Can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? And humbling yourself and not feeling like, you know, because you're, you're trying to start a company, you can't get help. Um, because that's the last thing you should think about. Uh, the very first thing everybody should think about when starting any company, uh, mostly in Africa, is you need help. You're going to need to ask people for help and advice um, on how to improve your product and on what to do. So that's what I did. So I enlisted people from my high school um, in Nigeria and got them to help me out. Uh, their social media, I reached out to them and said, look, can you help me out with this? Can you talk to your friends? Can you look at this? Can you try it out? Uh, so that was my marketing. Uh, my marketing cost was zero. Uh, this multi-million dollar company started with zero marketing, just a few thousand dollars in a bedroom, um, taking you know very core concepts to heart, things like customer service in the very beginning, you know, you have to make sure everybody's happy and you know just really watching costs because you don't have any money you're trying to make sure and you're trying to see is this idea i have actually valid is it going to work in the market am i going to have to tweak it significantly or am i just going to have to tweak it a little bit uh so it was it was an interesting challenge uh working or building an african company from the us but 100 percent possible with family and friends 
and making sure you utilize those resources around you um, that you trust. So uh, that's and that's, that's what it. we want to hear exactly. I mean, as you can see, you know, dear Africa Business Jumpstarters audience of Leap High Africa, it is possible. It is really possible. I think uh, one of the secrets here, Chris, if you if you agree, is um, looking where the demand is, looking where a problem is, and then finding a solution. And very often we as Africans, even visiting Africa, you know, we come across certain challenges and maybe we, you know, we, we worry about them or we even we are annoyed by them. Um, but they're really the, the opportunities lie there, right? You, you face yeah, the problem. Yeah, those are the opportunities. The opportunities, the things. So I, I think we're we're all very blessed to be diaspora, to you know, to live outside the continent, um, to be, you know, to to live outside the continent and go back. It's it's a blessing that nobody should ever take for granted. So number one, we're all blessed to have this opportunity to leave Africa and see how the world is, and go back and see what the problems are that while we were there, we probably didn't think were problems, but we've left the continent. We've seen how other people do it, how other countries tackle problems. So when we go back and we see those things that annoy us, you know, be it electricity, be it labor, be it, you know, transportation, um, acquisition of products, and we go back and we say, you know what? this is not a problem back in Germany. This is not a problem back in Canada, in the U S this is how they've resolved the problem. Let me, let me see how I can adapt it towards Africa or towards Nigeria or Kenya, Ghana, wherever you're from. Let me see how I can adopt and change that because the country I've been living in the past few years or months, they don't have this problem. And they don't have this problem because they have A, B, C, or D, you know, companies in place. And that's, that's what you're looking for. So I would say, look for the things that annoy you the most and that you're passionate about because passion is the key. Um, so you have to look for those things that annoy you and that you're passionate about. And then build a company around that, knowing, you know, hey, you know, back from the country I live in, you know, when I was abroad or whatever, they didn't have this problem and they solved it with X, Y, and Z and building your own company around X, Y, and Z would be fantastic. And you will have challenges. Everybody has challenges. I, I look at businesses and starting a business as being a baby and then, you know, being a toddler, then being a teen and then an adult. So you, you know, babies stumble, babies fall, you know, um, babies crawl. So you have to start there knowing you will make mistakes, knowing you will, get injured, but you learn and grow. And, you know, one day you'll be an adult and you'll, you'll be running a very successful company. But um, I do, Wonderful. I really hope people can, when they go back to the country and they, and they look at Africa and the things that annoy them, they should see that as a very positive thing because you or they can actually fix those things because it annoys them so much, put some passion in it, Go help the go help the continent out. Do something good. Amazing, Chris. I have two more questions, and um, I I I could have you know, go on with questions because um, it's an amazing business model and there's so much we can learn from you and so much the audience can learn from you. But um, a couple of more questions to our audience here. So um, in terms of, you know, the challenges you over came. One thing that we see with African entrepreneurs, be it on the continent or abroad, uh, just in general entrepreneurship, the odds are actually um, against us when we look at the st st statistics. So a lot of startups fail. And I can see a lot of people having great ideas, but for some reason they don't see them through um, or the progress is very slow. I remember the story you told me when we met in uh, California with the, the one parcel that you were handing over um, to, to the shipping agency. And it was one single parcel that started this whole journey. So, Chris, what do you think um, is important for people to really um, stay in the game, even if progress is you know, slow in the beginning? Um, what's the mindset that we need to create to, to believe in our vision and stay in the game? Yeah, I, so first of all, you have to have, 
passion um, and willingness to see things through. Uh, I think a lot of a lot of businesses fail, um, and this is a, a, a mental shift that I, I've taken, and I think many entrepreneurs take, and everybody listening to this should should realize is you know it takes passion and it also takes seeing things through to the end you many people stop when things go wrong or many people stop if they don't see the speed um, just like you rightfully said i was so remember the story i started in my spare bedroom and then grew the company to now we have warehouses in you know different parts of the world but it started in a bedroom it started with one order you know, there's always that one order, one customer. That's how it starts. That's the very first step. And you just have to have that ability to say that, you know, to yourself, I have this vision. I truly think it's right. I truly think I can see it through. And it takes patience, understanding, and, you know, getting resources around you and having people, you know, provide you with positive feedback and crit, you know, critical feedback also, because you, know, you might not be on, on the right path, but it doesn't mean you have to you know, let go of the idea entirely. So I would just say patience, patience has, was key. Um, and you know, I did hit some major stumbling blocks. I mean, one of the stories, I don't even know if I've ever told this story publicly, but one of the things that happened with the company in the very beginning is we did get, um, and this was early, early, early days, you know, so first 200 packages being shipped. Now we do 200 in a few hours, but the very first 200 packages being shipped, it's, you know, it took, probably took a few months to do 200 back then. Um, one of the shipments was stolen. Um, and when it was stolen, obviously, we, we got paid or I got paid for, for the product. So it's not the customer's fault. Now it got stolen in transit. Um, people use other words like, you know, damage, blah, blah, blah. It was stolen. I'm, I'm going to be very frank with everybody. It was stolen. Um, I, it was stolen somewhere on the continent um, prior to delivery to the, to the end user. And it was a very expensive shipment. Um, there were a few laptops there. There was a watch, um, and I, you know, I I felt defeated. I felt, you know, this. I don't need this. You know, <laughs> um, this is a too big a risk. I, I'm I'm done. You know, because it was so early. I didn't have that many customers. It was not a big company. There was still just one employee, pretty much running the show, and that was me. So it was. It was not a big deal. I could have easily just dropped the mic, walked away, and nobody would have ever heard about Mall for Africa again. Uh, I think we only had about 300 users um, on the platform or registered on the platform and only 80, 90 who were using the platform. So this was the first 80 people who had used Mall for Africa. Um, about 10 of them had products stolen in this shipment. And I was saying to myself, you know, I, I'm done. I, I want to give up. This is, this is crazy. Um, but I had to call all the customers personally because I had no customer service back then, you know, no 24 hour service. So I had to call them personally and call each customer and tell each one their products were stolen um, or I, I think I didn't use the word stolen. I just said um, their product for some reason um, was unacquirable at that, at that particular time. And it, you know, it didn't make it throughout the whole shipment. So I was trying to be, you know, politically correct in, in telling my story to them. And in speaking to each of them, I found hope. Um, I, I actually found that they understood what was trying to happen and what I was trying to build. And every single person I called said, no problem, please just help make this right. Do not give up. And everybody gave me that encouraging word not to give up. Now, 
I had to cough up the money. Nobody said, you know, yeah, don't worry about my item. I had to cough up the money to rebuy the item and reship the item. So there was a good cost to me. But it ended up, you know, showing me, you know, two sides. This is people in Africa want to see improvements. People want to see us grow. You know, they, they know that there's a lot that can be done on the continent. And they want to see that happen. So they will encourage you. And there are many people in Africa that, I mean, there's so many amazing people. Um, they will encourage you and help you as in whatever capacity they can to grow. But you have to have it in yourself also to take that journey. Because the journey is a two-way street. The customer journey and you, the business owner journey. Two different journeys, but they meet at some point in time, which is where you get the customer relationship and you can actually build. Um, and I would say to everybody, you have to take this journey. Think about the customer or your user base. Take the journey with them and take them on the ride with you. It's going to be rough, but... Um, Africa truly wants to improve. The people on the continent want to see change. I don't think there's anybody you can talk to and anybody listening to this that says, I don't want Africa to change. I am happy with the way Africa is. I've never come across anybody that would say I'm happy the way Africa is because we shouldn't be. It, there's a lot of improvement that can be done. Each of us have a role to play in that improvement. Every yeah. single person, whether you have money, whether you're rich, poor, it doesn't matter. We all have a brain, something in our heads that we can use to improve the continent and then improve business and the way things are done on the continent. And we all have to use that to do something valuable for the continent. Again, money is not required all the time. A brain is required. And you have to just keep to it and keep at it and know you will hit stumbling blocks, but just keep on, keep on and keep on going on. Um, many people may say you're silly, you're stupid, you know, you don't have to do it. Um, but honestly speaking, if you know you're doing something positive and you know you're improving lives and you have an amazing idea, um, good things are not easy to get. Um, easy is for easy is for the people who just want quick money and want to do stuff and and that's not life um, life is about hills and um, valleys and peaks and fires um, and you have to go through all of them in order to get to the destination but uh, it can be done and that's I just give you one experience of many obviously that happened the first few months of my business been open it's been five years trust me uh, I've gone through a lot. Um, we don't have theft um, anymore, but there are issues. You know, there's always logistics. There's always um, items being shipped that are that go to the wrong destination. There's, there's all of that stuff that happens. But you know, not giving up and just saying, you know, I'm going to keep on doing what I do to improve my company because I can always improve my company. But also doing what I can do to improve the lives of others and make sure I do my part in making Africa better. Um, and I'm only one person, so I can only do so much this tiny bit. But if we all come along together, if we all put our ideas together, we can improve the continent as a whole. And having a platform like yours and, and, and what you're doing um, is, is amazing because it just helps tell the story on how, you know, one person can do one tiny thing, but that tiny thing can affect so many people. Um, but if, those, if all, all of us come together and do those tiny things and we now affect way, 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 way more people, um, Africa, as everybody knows, is going to be the biggest nation, the biggest continent, you know, in the next few years. Um, we can do our part to make sure that we stand out and, uh, you know, even the U.S. and Europe, uh, they, they now know they have a contender in the ring and um, I, I truly feel we're going to win that battle and we're going to be number one. Chris, I couldn't agree more. I'm actually getting goosebumps while you talk, you know, because this is, I, I feel it so strongly what you just said. And I think it's not just about the opportunity, it's also about the responsibility. But okay. sometimes when we talk about responsibility, there's some kind of negative quotation attached to it. But I see it as a blessing 
It's a blessing. You know, we had the generation of the, the revolutionaries and the generations of the freedom fighters. And now it's, we are the next generation to, you know, to change Africa. And I think it will come in the face of entrepreneurship, business. And I have to say, what makes me so hopeful for our continent is looking at the, the, the new generation of African entrepreneurs and businessmen uh, and women like yourself and uh, so many on the continent who, who have a strong sense of responsibility, accountability, social impact. As you said, you know, it's not just about making the money. It's about creating wealth for yourself and your family, uplifting your family and communities, but at the same time contributing towards Africa's development. And that's the power combination I'm really, really strongly promoting. And I, everyone that is in the African business space, really, um, guys, everyone feels it. Everyone lives it. And I think that's why the African business space, although we're still bumping into the same people, it is an amazing, an amazing space to be in. And everyone else who is still running after the nine to five, working for some companies where you can easily be replaced, I think everyone else is missing out big time. Yeah, it's, it's you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, so the question everyone should ask, I mean, and I've, I've asked myself this, is who else is going to do it? Nobody cares about your home more than you do. Nobody is it's just nobody. Somebody may be driving by and I'm, I'm not talking about your physical home. I'm talking about where you came from. You know what what has made you who you are. Nigeria made me who I am. I, I went to a boarding school and I had I had a, a, a third world country upbringing perfectly fine. That is what made me who I am. I have to give back. You know, you just you have to give back to your home. I mean, nobody cares about your home more than you. Um, nobody cares about Nigeria more than me because I'm Nigerian. I'm not Ghanaian. If I was Ghanaian, I would care more about Ghana than I did Nigeria, and that's okay. But, you know, I've built a company that's affecting the entire continent, but I started with my home. More for Africa started with Nigeria, hands down, we were nowhere else on the continent but Nigeria. Now we're in different countries in Africa, but nobody cares more about your home than you. So who else is going to work on it? Don't expect the US government or some other person to go back to your homeland and do something great. You, it's you, you're, you're, the, you're the person. Um, so don't expect anybody to do it. That idea you have to improve your home no one, and I mean no one, can do it better than you because that's yeah. where you're from. Exactly. You're doing something for your home. Um, so I 100% I agree with you. Yeah. It's a matter of the heart as well, not just a matter of business. Chris, um, and, and maybe just to add for everyone who is wondering um, that Chris and More for Africa um, and, um, are actually also working towards bringing African products into um, the U.S. and into the world. Um, so there, there's, it's a huge platform, More for Africa. Chris, lastly, um, what is your advice to the African diaspora, Africans on the continent? I think we covered it almost in the last one, but I just... Very, what's your advice for people who are still sitting on the fence, who don't know what to do, how to get started? What's your advice? My advice is the take the leap, um, take, take the jump. I mean, you, 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 have, you have those words already, um, you know, but, but take the leap, take the jump. Um, don't hesitate. The, the one thing that prevents people from doing something positive. You know, you're only this much away from making a difference. And this much, the thing that lies in between, you know, making a difference and, and not making a difference is hesitation. Um, just take the leap. Don't hesitate. You know, do your due diligence, do your homework, take the leap. You know, you will not succeed if you don't take the leap because that jump um, you know, that jump start, as you, you would put it, you know, that, that jump, um, it, it, it means everything. Um, and you don't think about yourself. Think about all the people you're going to impact. If you have this internal feeling of me, 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 you know, you, you, won't, you won't get anywhere. But if you understand this idea you have, 
yes, you want to make money, you want to be wealthy, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but think about the people you're going to impact. Think about the change you're going to have on the continent and how people now see the continent. Look, I, I'm just one guy, you know, um, built, built a very successful company. But the change that we've made, we've gotten eBay, you know, one of the biggest e-commerce platforms on the planet. We've gotten them to see Africa totally differently. eBay has been around for years and years and years. We all know them. We've, we've all heard of them. They'd never really focused on Africa. But little old me with this little idea, which has now blown up, has now gotten eBay to look at Africa in a very different light. We've gotten over 250 retailers to look at Africa in a different light. We now have eBay saying, okay, um, you know, what can we do better? And I obviously took the time to approach eBay and tell them, look, you know, we're, we're doing millions of dollars sending your products onto the continent. You now need to help us. You know, because people in Africa are making amazing products. You now need to help my people, you know, get their products into America because they want, you know, they, they want to be recognized. We have amazing products. Let's share it with the world. And there's no better place than to share it with the US and the UK. So let's do that. So now we got eBay, you know, for the very first time doing business with Africa um, through our platform. So we're helping people in Africa sell products on the eBay platform exclusively through us. So don't think of this idea you have as being something tiny. Um, think of the big, big picture and where it could be. It took me five years to get to, to this point. You know, so it's not an easy journey. It's not quick money. Many people think of quick money and making a quick go at it. No, it takes time. But impact itself takes time. Touching lives takes time. It's not, um, it's not something that's turnkey and it's going to be done just like that it takes time so just have the patience have the the gumption and have that motivation within yourself to pull through um, and get things done but uh, it's up to us um, it's left to us to do that you can have a big impact think big uh, take the leap, take the jump, do not hesitate. Hesitation is the key to failure in, in my mind and um, just don't hesitate. Right, so you've heard it, um, dear audience, the Africa Business Jump Starters, the leap in the unknown, that's where the magic lies, right? And it was a wonderful, wonderful session. Thank you so much, Chris, for your time today. And let's support also African-led businesses. There will be more and more. Visit more for Africa and check it out. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for Thank your you. time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.